Marjorie! We are talking something evil. This is a 1972 TV movie directed by Steven Spielberg. Yes, that Steven Spielberg. Obviously one of his earlier roles, really before he uh, became a household name, and I believe this was made uh, just after the movie Jewel. And this one stars uh, Darren McGavin, who you probably know from Kolchak the Night Stalker, and uh, you've also got Sandy Dennis here. And it's essentially a uh, low budget kind of possession movie. The story is as follows. We have this kind of city living couple that decide that they're gonna buy a house in the country because kind of the wife is a bit of an artist. She kind of likes being out there. Um, the husband played by McGavin is a little bit kind of reluctant, but he kind of, he agrees to it because he kind of keeps his wife and, and children happy. Um, and they, they buy this particular kind of farmhouse and it's got all these kind of symbols painted on it and they don't really know what it's about, but like, the wife kind of likes them because she just, she's a bit of an artist, so she just kind of likes the design really. However, there may, be, there may well be some type of demonic entity that is present on this kind of property that may well be causing uh, this family problems in the future. What will happen? You'll just have to watch the movie and find out. So let's discuss something evil. Obviously a early 70s made for TV movie, so don't be expecting anything too flashy. And to be honest with you, there's really no special effects in this film. I have a little bit of a wind machine and kind of things like that. So certainly not one of the more visual kind of uh, movies. So, but what can I say that works in this film? So for me, uh, I, I do think the, that our lead actors do a pretty good job. But Gavin here, I think, is is fantastic as this, as this husband who's like, who works like a kind of advertising exec and they're kind of filming adverts and stuff. And I actually kind of really enjoy the kind of the incidental uh, just dialogue that where he's kind of working and kind of making these commercials and how he's kind of talking to his kind of colleagues and stuff about, you know, the actress kind of do, making the commercial and things like that. It's kind of almost like, a fun little kind of peek behind the curtain that I just kind of thought was, it just seemed kind of really uh, naturalistic kind of, uh, you know, dialogue and things like this and, and the way it was kind of made. I, I thought those scenes were really good, but you know, to be fair, the acting for our, our two main sort of characters is, is pretty good for the pair of them. Now, this is certainly a less flashy role for Steven Spielberg and I don't think you see any of his real trademark magic there, but there are a couple of shots where I do feel uh, that he's being somewhat experimental at this kind of point. We're using kind of camera angles, and we have, for example, false perspective. With it was a, a shot that I kind of recall there, where there's a, the, a you know, we have a shot of the, the child in the kind of the foreground, the mother in the kind of the background. That is, again, it's quite a kind of like uh, an interesting kind of shot composition and things like this. So there are a few inches here where there's a little bit of kind of flair, but it doesn't really have that. Steven Spielberg hasn't really kind of found his feet as a director. Um, as of yet at this kind of point in time. Um, I do think the music score is, 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 uh, is pretty good. It kind of adds to that kind of like that, uh, that 70s kind of style uh, kind of spookiness that, that kind of you saw in not many kind of like uh, 70s kind of like demon devil worship style movies. Uh, and it's not a particularly scary film to be honest, but there's a couple of kind of eerie scenes um, here and there and a good use of kind of audio effects I feel and it's relatively a short film so it's not too much of a commitment but I've got to be honest with you moving on to the kind of the negatives it's, it's quite a weak film overall I feel a lot of the problems here are at a script level because the movie doesn't really ever feel like it has much bite to it there's not not really a lot kind of going on I mean the demonic kind of, until we get the very kind of the, the climax, and even that it's relatively, uh, you know, low frills to be honest with you. Um, but the kind of, we have these kind of things happen, mainly to the kind of the wife and the kind of the oldest child. But they're relatively minor to be honest with you. I mean, and then what we do have borders on a little bit of weird because like we have like a, a glowing jar of goo 
that seems to be in, in this kind of shed that is just glowing and kind of pulsating for some reason. Don't know why? Never explained. The devil is a jar of goo. And a kind of a baby crying. And again, the relevance of that is just never really kind of uh, explained in the movie. It's just like creepy things. So, and then the, this, this is sort of like the way the wife acts. I don't know if there was enough there to kind of make her really like, I mean, she was the one that was kind of wanting to kind of move to this house and all of a sudden she kind of wants to leave because she feels like there's a presence there, but we never really see much of, of it. There's nothing really to kind of like really go, oh my God, that's definitely going to be uh, some type of demonic entity here. It's, it's not really, it's just kind of like a bit of wind and a few sounds here and there. They didn't really ever see much. Um, and then this is the kind of like the, uh, it's suggested that maybe she's kind of going a little bit mad and uh, or obviously you know, is she going mad or is there really like some type of uh, demonic entity there again it's something that I don't think was explored enough it's kind of introduced but it's not a lot is done with it we have this kind of like this duo of neighbors this older guy and his nephew and the nephew seems completely useless uh, and it is, there's no reason for his character to even be there. I thought there was going to be some type of reveal about it. No, nope, just there, you know. And then the kind of this older guy, he, he seems to know a little bit more without knowing not, without knowing anything, is the best way I can describe it. Because, you know, he's, he's led to be this, this wise old man who's got a bit of a handle about what's going on and kind of injecting himself into uh, the wise sort of um, life by talking about the symbols and stuff but he really doesn't at the end of the day know much at all so it's kind of again the, the role seems pointless just to have really a victim i think of this kind of uh of this kind of demonic force and as they say the the kind of the, there's nothing really to this sort of force it doesn't really it seems very ill-defined doesn't seem to be particularly kind of flashy um and and the finale when we we, we do get i think the probably the most supernatural thing was i won't spoil but it's like i've said it's nothing it's nothing flashy and it's nothing particularly uh, high tech in that regard. It ultimately becomes a little bit of a forgettable movie that is fairly poorly written, I have to say. And even though I have to say the, the direction isn't brilliant, it's, ser it's serviceable direction, poor script, but good acting, I would say that. So overall, it's probably, the best I can really give it is probably about four out of 10. Um, it's a below average film, there's no kind of doubt, doubt about that and I think it's only elevated, to be honest, maybe from a th otherwise it would have been a three by the kind of the acting here from our kind of central, uh, central characters who I do think do a good job and that is why I'm giving it a five out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.